We continue our Sunday morning summer sermon series by asking the question, how much do you weigh the burden of unrealistic expectations? People are struggling with a lot of different things in life. One of the things that people experience are those who expect things from them that they feel like are unrealistic. And yet I have to try to do them. There are things that are required that they really want me to do, but I just can't. It's outside of my ability. How do I handle that? My first brush with those unrealistic expectations probably was with something my parents wanted me to do when I was a kid and I just didn't think it was right. That's probably the first. But my first real memory of confronting unrealistic expectations happened in Boy Scouts. I was a scout for four weeks. The first three were great. We had these meetings where I was sitting on a bench learning to tie different kinds of knots. And we were going to take a hike. And we were learning different kinds of things involved with camping. And I enjoyed all of that. And then on the fourth meeting on a Thursday night, after the required knot tying practice, he gathered us up and he said, in about two weeks, we're going on a canoeing trip. And I thought, I like that sound. And while we're on the trip, we're going to come along and turn over your canoe. And we're going to teach you with your canoeing partner how to hold the canoe over your head and get out of the river. My dad showed up. And I said, my Boy Scout career is over. <laughs> there is no sense in being poured out of a perfectly good canoe. I don't want to do that. Swimming's not a problem. It's the water in my face that's a problem. Still is. And I don't think that I want to have to put up with that. That was an unrealistic expectation. I don't care if I miss that badge. People have unrealistic expectations of others all the time. Maybe it's your boss who adds more and more work even though expecting it all to be done in the same amount of time that the less work was required. Maybe your parents have such high expectations based upon their own desires and their own thoughts that they push and push and push and drive you in ways that you just don't think are realistic of them. Sometimes even in churches it works that way. Sometimes churches expect things out of preachers or preachers expect things out of members that are just outside the bounds of realism and yet we push and push and push. So how are we supposed to handle that? How are we supposed to deal with it? I mean, it happens, so what am I supposed to do? Let me give you some thoughts this morning that might help us handle unrealistic expectations. Let me also tell you that this series on how much do you weigh is now going to be its own track series in our tracks out in the lobby. And so you can get them as we go through them and use them and pass them out maybe to people who are suffering from some of these things. But now let's think about how can I handle unrealistic expectations? 
lives. In the first place, let's make sure we understand what unrealistic expectations are. That is, what is the definition of an unrealistic expectation? If you have your Bibles, you might turn to Matthew chapter 23. And though we'll not consider the entire chapter, the first four verses open for us this discussion and provide the proper definition. Jesus is dealing with the multitudes, and he looks out amongst them and he said, because apparently in that number were some of the religious leaders, the scribes, and the Pharisees of the day. And Jesus looked out there amongst that number and he said, the scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. That is, they are leaders. They are those who teach. That is the seat. Now, whatever they tell you to do, you do it. In other words, they know the law. They tell you what the law says, Therefore, follow what it says. But notice what he said after that. But do not do according to their works, for they say and do not. He was rebuking them. What was he rebuking them for? Well, hypocrisy. You tell people what to do, but you don't do it. But the second thing was in their telling what to do, they were giving unrealistic expectations. For in verse 4, he defines for us what that is. They bind heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on men's shoulders. There's your definition for unrealistic expectations. True unrealistic expectations are hard burdens that cannot be borne placed upon the shoulders of individuals who do not have the ability to do it. Unrealistic expectations. That's the definition. Now, the definition helps us to understand the kinds of things that we are talking about. Let's put it in the context of the Lord's church. It is an unrealistic expectation for us to expect that every single person does or can do the exact same things. In other words, it would be an unrealistic expectation for us to require every single male member to stand up and give a lesson. That's a burden hard to bear, laid upon the shoulders of some who just cannot do it. That's not right to expect that. It is not right to expect that every single woman should be able to teach and work with every single age group of young children that there are. Some don't deal well with younger. Some don't deal well, well with older. Some don't work well in this situation. Some in that. To say that it is expected would be an unrealistic expectation. So anyone who takes a heavy burden that someone cannot bear and throws it on their shoulders and says, this is something you have to do, becomes an unrealistic expectation. Now that's the definition that we are working from. So when you handle dealing with or handle or unrealistic expectations, first of all, Understand the definition. And number two, make sure you're talking about that definition. Not just what appears to be the definition. It's unrealistic for you to expect me to do that. Well, let's examine that. Exodus 3 and 4. 
God called Moses at the burning bush. He said, Moses, I want you to get my people out of Egypt. And Moses began to say, in our words, Lord, that is an unrealistic expectation. First of all, he said, who am I that I should be doing that? You shouldn't expect that of me. Me? God said, yeah, I expect that of you. Well, now, wait a minute. It's an unrealistic expectation because I don't even know your name. Who are you? When they ask me, who are you? They don't even know God dealt with that. He said, I still want you to go. Moses said, wait a minute. They're not going to listen to me. It's not fair for you to expect that. They're not going to listen to me. God said, I'll deal with it. You still go. Oh, but wait a minute, Lord. It's an unrealistic expectation. I'm not a good speaker. I don't talk well. Don't expect me to go. God said, I'll deal with it. You go. And Moses said, Fifth, I can't. God said, You can. Moses saw the call of God to get his people out of Egypt as an unrealistic expectation. But he was wrong. It was realistic. But he misunderstood. He didn't get it. It's not about him. It was about God. In Matthew chapter 16, a young man came to Jesus and said, Lord, what do I need to do to eternal, have eternal life? And Jesus said, keep the commandments. He said, I have. And Jesus looked into his heart and understood who he was, and he immediately said to him, okay, here's what you need to do. Sell everything you have and give to the poor. You'll have treasure in heaven. Come and follow me. He said that because he knew he was very rich and that his money was an impediment to his service. He said, that's an unrealistic expectation. You really want me to give everything I have away? Are you kidding me? And he left. What he thought was an unrealistic expectation was really a lack of commitment. And he confused the two. On another occasion in John chapter 6, Jesus fed people as he did on two or three occasions. And then he began speaking and talking to them about various things. And he got down to some very intense statements when he said, My flesh is food indeed. He who eats of my flesh and drinks my blood will have eternal life. How can he say that? How can he give us his flesh to eat? And in verse 66, the Bible says, And they turned and left. That's an unrealistic expectation for you to say we have to eat your flesh and drink your blood. They thought it was an unrealistic expectation. You know what it was? Ignorant. Lack of understanding. Before we just jump to the conclusion that what I'm being asked to do is an unrealistic expectation, let us make sure that it's not my own weaknesses that I'm confusing for that. Let us make sure that it's not my own lack of commitment that's making me call it that. Let's make sure that it's not my own ignorance that makes me think it's an unrealistic expectation. Third, 
to handle unrealistic expectations, what you think they are, once you're operating with the proper definition, and once you've decided that it is really that, it's not any of these other things, what am I going to do? Well, you can't quit. You can't just throw up your hands. You can't run away. You still have responsibility. So you follow the mandate of the wise man in Ecclesiastes 9, verse 10. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might. Maybe this person is putting unrealistic expectations on you. You can't control that. You don't have any, last time we talked about a lack of control as one of these burdens that we're dealing with. When I understand that I can't control every single thing, okay, do what you can do. The wise man said, do and be content. Go ahead and do what you can do. Maybe you can't do it to the degree that the person wants because it is unrealistic, but you can do something. You can do your best. And at least you will be true to yourself. At least you can pillow your head and know that I have done all I could do. The reaction of the other person that's not your responsibility. Unrealistic expectations do not give me permission to quit, forsake my responsibility, or to give up. They simply make me refocus and do all I can do and then let things happen as they will. Sometimes, People think that God has unrealistic expectations. We turn to the Word of God. We see what the Bible teaches. And people immediately react and say, that's not realistic. You can't expect that. Not in this day. Not in this time. We've gotten smarter. Our culture is better. The Bible was written in a culture and in a time that was less educated and less advanced. And he had to deal with those kinds of things. Surely God doesn't still expect that in this day and time. I think he does. Because God doesn't offer unrealistic expectations. Here's why I know that. One, God knows the real you. 1 Peter chapter 4, starting in verse 10. As each one has received a gift, let him minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If it is speaking, let him speak as the oracles of God. If ministering, let him do it as of the strength and the ability that God has given to him. God does not make unrealistic expectations of anyone because he's the one who provided your talents. He's the one who gives us our gifts. He's the one that gave us our abilities. God knows the real me. Therefore, number two, he never asks me something that I cannot do. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, starting in verse 12, God said, Wherefore to him who thinks he stand, take heed lest he fall. In other words, we're all susceptible to falling. 
Not a one of us is above temptation. Not a one of us is perfect. Not a one of us is strong enough to handle everything thrown at us. So don't be conceited. Don't be self-reliant. Take heed lest you fall. But then he said in verse 13, there is no temptation overtaking you, but that which is common to all men. But God, God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you might be able to bear it. God doesn't make unrealistic expectations. He makes a way out of what we think are unrealistic expectations because he knows me. And the principle that flows from the statement, which is about handling sin, the principle would fit any situation. God would never ask anything of me that I don't have the ability, the opportunity to do. He knows me. He only asks what I can do. But then third, he promises the help to fix my weakness. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4, verse 13. There was an occasion in 2 Corinthians 11 when Paul seemed to have been complaining. We might look at it that way. And he talks about all of the heartaches and all of the troubles and all of the trials and all of the difficulties. His beatings, his arrests, his shipwreck his time without food, his time in the wilderness, his time when friends forsook him. And then he says, and on top of that, there is the care of all the churches. We might say Paul was on the verge of throwing up his hands and saying, God has expectations of me that I can't do. They're unrealistic. I can't do all of this. That's what he meant when he wrote those words to the Philippians. I can do all things. What things can you do, Paul? All things that God expects of me. Because I can do it based on his gifts to me, his never asking me to do beyond those gifts, and his strength to take up the slack. It is not meant to say, I can do all things, even things, that I don't have any ability and talent to do. That's not what he's saying. He's giving us a principle by which finally we can handle what might seem like unrealistic expectations. To say, God's knowledge of you, his gifts to you, combined with his strength for you, mean that whatever he expects, you can do. So take heart. Do with your best. And as the text read earlier, 1 Corinthians 9 states, you can become, with God's help, combined with your gifts and your abilities, you can reach people in all kinds of places. You can deal with all kinds of things because God is on your side. When we handle unrealistic expectations, make sure... We're talking about real, unrealistic expectations. Don't confuse them with your own problems. But recognize that I can't control that, but I can do whatever I can do. 
and I'll be content. And at all times, be thankful that God never has unrealistic expectations of you. In fact, God's expectation is this. I gave my son. Now I expect you to give yourself to me. I gave my son for you. You give yourself to me. Is that unreal ex unrealistic expectation? Is that something outside of my ability to do? No. It begins, though, with a commitment. A commitment to the Lord as the Savior of mankind. A commitment to make my life His life. And a commitment to obey whatever He teaches. It starts. That life starts in the waters of baptism. When the old life is washed away. And the new life is born. Wherein we rely on the power of God not on our own strength. Sometimes we forget that and we are destroyed by the destroyer because we use our own strength instead of his and we fall away. Today, if we can help you start your life with the Lord or put it back on track, we're here for you as we stand and sing together.